Hi, it's Jan from the mountain. This, in this video, I will be painting my own wall art in watercolour. I will be visiting the French markets in Lucca and actually showing off my sweater in a bit more detail to you. There seems to be no end to this awful cold and wet weather. So I spent lots of time indoors and in particular in my painting studio, well, arts and crafts studio. I work in here, um, not only my painting and arts and crafts and other things, but I do my Etsy shop. So sometimes I look around and I think, oh, I need to improve this. I've got big boxes of wool that need processing. I've got nowhere to put them. But I'm feeling motivated and in the other part of my studio, I've got to polish my loom, do something with this chest of drawers and basically fill up some spaces on the wall. This is the lovely, lovely sofa that my dear friend gave me. It's very comfy and squishy. In fact, it's so comfy that even the cushions slip down. But as you can see, it needs a lot more. I think Maya Dog will agree. My friend very kindly gave us a TV as well. So we've set up a small corner for viewing. But again, huge gaps in my wall. So I need to get busy and paint some art to fill in those spaces. I did get a little bit distracted during the process. I made a sketch and a watercolour. But look at these, this beautiful hummingbird moth that seemed to take a liking to the flowers outside of my window. Here is the finished piece. I've just done a simplistic painting in watercolour. A couple of tulips in a terracotta bowl. So I need to frame it and then I can fill in a small space that needs filling in. What I have done is I have bought some very cheap, the cheapest frames from Ikea. They're in wood, a white wood, Fiscabo. And I actually put some um, gilding wax onto them, the frames, and it gives them a, a gold finish. I'm sorry I can't get the camera to focus on this particular jar of gilding wax, but there it is. I've had it quite a long time because it goes a long way. So I just rub it with my finger onto the frame and leave it a little while just to dry. And it gives a lovely gold finish on these simple frames. This is a yellow orchid that I've painted. It's an orchid that I was given on Mother's Day and it's very beautiful and simple. It is a contrast to these bold pieces that I have in my studio and I am going to paint more uh, watercolour pictures to put on my wall because I love the freshness of them. They're fresh and simple and beautiful. Now I need to just sort out that frame. So here it is on the wall. It doesn't actually take very long to do the frame. About 10 minutes. It 
it's a small frame. I think you saw the size before when I showed you. And about 10 minutes, it took me about an hour and a half in all to paint the picture and to hang it. And I'm really pleased. This is a job which I don't look forward to because it's just taking all the dust off my loom. I haven't done any weaving for a while, so I have lots of projects in mind and until I've actually dusted off my loom, I can't get started. So today's the day. Let's get the dust off and get my loom ready for action. The project that I'm wanting to finish is making panels for a unit I have in my studio kitchen area. It's a storage shelf with a worktop on and it just looks so ugly because the shelf part is prone to be untidy. It's very difficult to keep on top of it. So I'm in the process of weaving some panels, purely experimental because I'm very, very new to weaving and I was lucky to be able to obtain a loom. Another friend gave me this loom. What I'm actually doing, oh, there's my panels you can see. What I'm doing is I have a small block of beeswax which I processed. I processed a good couple of years ago. Now I, over the years I have made lots of different types of wood furniture polish using beeswax, turps, oils, linseed oil, all sorts of different ingredients mixed together to try and make some sort of a furniture cream or furniture polish. The best result I've always got is just with a simple block of beeswax. I've changed my duster because the other duster was a bit fluffy and some fluff has got trapped on the wood. But the beeswax blocks, you have to rub a little bit, uh, but it buffs up to a shine which is very glossy and smooth. Sometimes my furniture polish and or cream has left a kind of a stickiness afterwards, but this pure beeswax doesn't. As I mentioned, I processed the beeswax some time ago and I got the raw beeswax, which came in a bowl of like porridge. It looked like porridge from a beekeeper friend going in here with some wire wool just to rub it in a little bit. Anyway, the beeswax, I tried different methods. It was very difficult. I never, never done it before and I tried to warm it and filter it, but it, the wax just congeals and blocks up all the filters. So in the end, I just floated it on water, hot water and everything separated and the wax was left in a block on the top. So I took that off and then I just melted it down and put it into a mould so that I would have beeswax blocks to use for whatever I wanted because I will often put some in cosmetics as well when I'm making my, my cosmetics and creams. And it just gives it um, more hold, it makes it into a, a thicker texture. I like the smell too, it smells lovely. And it does leave a lovely, lovely smooth finish in my wood. So I think my loom is nearly ready to go. Oh, we went daughter to Luca to the French markets. We went last year but the weather was bad. This year the sun was out at last. 
So here we are, Foulard de Paris, uh, scarves. Here, didn't take long to spot all these wonderful pastries. So we did buy some a bit later on to take home. Absolutely delicious. Here we have oils and scents, which the, the smell was absolutely amazing. The market is held in a piazza, Napoleone in Luca. Soaps. You wouldn't expect anything else from a French market. It's lovely, lovely tins to carry your soap in. Beautiful. Again, the perfume smell from this store is amazing. This, I'm sorry, the video quality is a bit poor for a couple of seconds. There's lots of teas here. I bought some lovely tea. I got some rose tea and some lavender tea. These are spices and the smell again was amazing. Breton biscuits. It was so difficult not to buy lots and lots of naughty food. This was the cheese counter and I did get some goat's cheese, which I love. Especially goat's cheese with fig in the centre. And here is my pullover. I'm so pleased with this. I've just finished blocking it and I'll just put it out on the table for you so I can show you it in a little bit more detail. I'm thrilled with this. I don't think the fact I had to change some of the colours as I went along has had any detrimental effect to my pullover. I don't want to wish my time away but I cannot wait to wear this. I enjoyed knitting it every second and I did try and knit in the back of the threads as I was going along to make it look a bit neater with no big loops. There's the pattern. I'm going to style it with a belt or without, with a shirt underneath. The only thing was, and you'll see it now, was the back pulled in a little bit too much at the top. It's kind of a bit racer backy, but it actually looks quite nice on. I will model it for you in the future. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you'll be one of the first to see me modeling my sweater. Because it's color work, it's actually quite a good thick piece of fabric there. So it will keep me beautifully warm in the winter time. While I'm on the subject of subscribing to my channel, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget the notification bell so you really will be the first to hear about my videos when they come out. There's just an annoying little thread there that I forgot to sew in at the end. I'll have to get that done. So there you have it. My fair isle pullover. All ready for the winter.